Okay, I think we will get started. Uh, let me again welcome everybody to the SUNY CUNY Faculty OER Roundtable Webinar Series. My name is Josh Barron. I'm the Executive Director at Lumen Learning. I'm going to be helping uh, facilitate the session today on OER uh, for math. In a moment or two, or just a minute or two, I'll be introducing more formally our uh, speakers uh, for today's session um, from Dutchess Community College, who will be spending most of the webinar sharing their experiences of uh, moving educational resources uh, for some mathematics. Uh, courses. And on kind of how we're going to use the time, I'm going to start off with a very brief introduction to the online homework, homework manager platform, which is some of the underlying technology often used to support OER for math. I'll then very quickly then introduce and turn it over uh, to Sarah, Rachel, and Marianne at Dutchess Community College to hear from them. We'll spend the mo most of the time hearing from them. They're going to share some slides as well as uh, actually go in and show some of the courses that they've been working on and developing, speak to the benefits of OER, some lessons learned, and then we'll wrap up with me coming back very briefly to talk about a couple of uh, topics that I think of generally are interesting or of interest to folks around the accessibility, learning and some enhancements that will be coming out uh, with the platform over the summer. Uh, we'll do some good, but I always like to encourage the add-ins as we go and often the best way to do that is your chat window to bring, bring your questions up uh, to speakers. Um, uh, feel free to ask questions as we go, but we'll also have some uh, time. I'm actually realizing that I didn't have a slide deck, so let me uh, kind of speak this very briefly, um, and maybe I'll bring them back up at the end here. So I do, before I introduce the, or like to highlight that if you're not familiar with open-nys.org source for anybody in the student community systems, want the OER that's out there for factors to adopt, as well as reach out to uh, some of the systems staff, both in CUNY and who are working to support faculty adoption of open educational resources. Uh, if you go to that website, again, it's open-nys.org. Uh, you'll see a uh, section there called Engage, and if you go to that, then you'll find forms filled out either for SUNY or CUNY. Um, answer your questions to consult with you. Uh, supported by both CUNY as part of New York State's recent uh, of $4 million for each system. Now, the adoption of optional resource is a great example of the two systems working together. And another thing to mention is that Lumen Learning is partnered with both student CUNY and so also helping to support a lot of the members of the educational resources and some of the underlying technology that sometimes can be quite important. Uh, particularly in courses such as math, we have some type of a quantitative assessment uh, kind of engine. And that's really a uh, good leading here to the overview of the online uh, homework manager. Um, so the platform, in my mind, in the kind of simplest terms, really combines together or allows you as instructors to combine open educational content, OER uh, materials, uh, often in the form of uh, math textbooks that are openly licensed, and combine that with openly licensed assessment questions. And I think anybody who's taught math before knows the power of bringing together both the content where with uh, places where students can really practice what they're reading about and learning, applying those in the you know, problem solving process and the assessments, and then obviously doing assessments that are also graded and uh, you know, having that be part of the graded part of the course. Uh, OM also has a number of instructional tools like grade books, uh, calendar systems and so forth, but I think really the heart of the system is uh, the content um, that's supported along with the assessments. Now, some of you may uh, just a community college be familiar with and maybe already using the Myo platform, so I just like to take a moment to kind of get this function very similar to my open math and the reason for that is it's running the same open source software behind the scenes and so the capabilities and tools will look very similar to you right now the major difference is around the kind of environment it's running in and some of the support that's provided for it so ohm is based in a, a kind of enterprise level 
uh, server environment, all the kind of modern data security protocols uh, and, and so forth in place to both make sure that it's a reliable system that won't go down uh, when we have thousands and thousands of students around the country using it, and also to make sure that things are in place to deal with compliance issues around things like FERPA uh, and other data security issues, which I think in today's day and age with um, things happening in, in social media spaces around data breaches, people all understand the importance of data security today. Um, at the end, I'll also briefly touch on some enhancements that are rolling out uh, for OHM that will be enhancements above what's available in MyOpenMath, so that's something that over the summer you'll start to see as well. I'd be happy to answer more questions about the differences there, but I'd just like to briefly touch on that. So let me just wrap up by kind of giving you a little bit of a better idea of kind of the options available in OHM, and I think uh, you'll see this here as you hear from uh, the instructors at Duchess in terms of the, the options that they're kind of uh, exploring as well. So OM really supports this broad range of adoption paths. Some people like to build from scratch, and that's great, and so you can get a blank site in the OM platform and build everything out from scratch on your own. Some people prefer to kind of take uh, components and assemble things in a way that makes sense best for them, but not necessarily starting from ground zero. And so uh, that's also possible in OM. So you can get bits and pieces of existing openly licensed courses uh, that other instructors around the country have been using and pull those pieces together into something that works for you. I think that's particularly relevant if you're working on a co-rec uh, kind of math course. And then the last option is, in some cases, people want to just pull something off the shelf and start using it. If you really want to take photos, you don't want to build a camera. You just want to get a camera and go off and start taking those pictures. And so it also supports what we call uh, course templates. And so you can go and get a copy of a complete set of course materials. Uh, still then go and adopt that to meet your own needs, but you're not starting from scratch. You're starting from a fully built out uh, course. So again, it kind of supports this full spectrum of going from just adopting to adapting to creating from scratch. The list here of what's that are available are just some of the major that I think are use, in use around the country right now. Uh, so again, you can come in and get copies of these <clears throat> these courses and then adopt them young. And towards the end, I'll make sure if it's not covered sooner, people know how to get uh, your own account and jump in and start looking at some of the course templates. So with that, uh, let me now turn it over to our main speakers here. And you're going to have to bear with my I bring up bio so I can properly introduce them. Uh, so with us today are uh, Rachel, and I'll, I'll apologize if I mispronounced your name, Rachel. Andrew. Van der Thank you. I asked you earlier and over the weekend. So, so uh, right. Rachel is the instructor of mathematics at Texas College. She's been teaching DCC since 2009 and involved in initiatives on improving the outcome of mathematics at Texas Community College since 1997. Initially, as an adjunct and concurrent instructor, she became a full time instructor in 2015. Uh, and last but not least is Sarah Taylor. Sarah, Sarah is, associate, is an associate professor excuse me, in mathematics at Dutchess Community College and currently serves as a part chair of the science department that has been at the college since 2004. I really thank all three of you for taking time out of what I know are really busy schedules to uh, share what you're doing at Dutchess with us. Uh, so really appreciate your time. That I'm going to stop sharing my screen, and you guys can kind of take over and share yours. Sharing. Maybe. Looks like I'm sharing. Sharing. Can everybody hear me okay? I hear you actually seeing your screen. Did you come that? Screen share screen button at the bottom. I just did this. That's a different one. And I, are you, you there? Now? now you. I mean, I see. Yeah. Can you see it okay? 
It looks like they can. I might be having a small delay on my end. I'm just seeing that you're sharing. Looks like, yep, everybody can see it. So I want you to okay. uh, proceed. Good. Okay. So um, I'm hoping it will click through. There we go. We introduced us. Just jump right into it. Um, I was just going to give you the brief run college. If you aren't familiar with it, our own school. Uh, we have well, 10 ones down in the net, but we typically run about 10,000. We are primarily um, literate, uh, and a lot of concurrent enrollment students as well, well in the area. Um, Pre-calculus, calculus, statistics in the high schools. Uh, we have a decent sized business program, engineering. Overwhelmingly a service department math program, uh, but it is very small. Most of our, our math students are majoring in. I did give the little pie chart there, offering in our huge students taking statistics as a required course for their program. Um, we have, of course, a lot of in remedial math. Uh, we have a survey and calculus. Other college will include lots of data, um, I don't know, pre calc math for elementary school teachers, tech math. But a lot of remedial and a lot of statistics is being taught. So um, we had for many, many years been using textbooks. And we also started using uh, the computer assisted instruction packages, such as My Math Lab, Math Excel, We Math Test product, but it was much cheaper. We used Wiley Plus, all these products that I'm sure you're all familiar with that usually run 100 bucks or so for the students. Uh, we were really seeing a lot of students making the choice to not purchase textbooks sometimes uh, because of the high cost. We value at our institution being uh, the lowest tuition in the state, in the SUNY system. So it is something we really think about a lot. Um, when we went to a conference back in 2016 at Nismatic, we were able to attend a, a session where we saw my open math for the very first time and we came back and just <laughs> We were so excited. We came back from this conference, that Nismatic conference, and we said within within like three weeks, we're like, we are switching everything over to my open math. We're dumping these hundred dollar products. We can make this so great and so inexpensive for our students. And so we did. And at this point, you see the big list in front of you of courses that are fully OER or at least partially OER. And we're going to go through and give you some of the details of this one by one. Each of these courses that we are using OER is really quite different from one another. Um, Josh already talked about the fact that you can start with a blank slate and just fill it in. And we have done that with some of these courses. And then other courses, we have really just kind of copied and pasted from things that were already existing. Uh, and, and I think really for the 094, 98, part of that was almost a template course. So you'll see aspects of each of these. Um, and we just wanted to give you guys an opportunity to see how we made it work. I think, it, I think it's working anyway. So <laughs> here we go. Um, so Rachel's going to talk about our math literacy course. Into so we just oh, so go down to Chrome open. and just click on this so it. Uh, this little tab keeps coming up and blocking us from accessing. <laughs> so I can get the tab. Uh, there we go. There we go. We got it. Okay. There's a way exiting the screen. Okay. So this example, I um, and you can I have here. But we're just focusing right now on math. 0.92, which is the developmental math course, six course most part in our math nine. Um, 092 was a course that we came back from and we were given to write this course. This was um, a build from build from scratch. So I thought we're still logged. So we got logged out. Let me get in quick. Okay. So. 
wanted to build from scratch. Um, I took our uh, course syllabus, our outcomes, and we basically had five units. And each unit, I'm going to actually go, can I get over here? You can drive that down. I'll move this down. Click on here, the student view, so this would be what our students see. This gives you an introduction, but the way it was into units. And then each is broken down for the learning outcomes that we expect students to be able to get from that unit. Um, the practice assignment is there are videos lined here. So this class, um, we are using a book that we to but you'll see in other class embedded. The videos were obtained um, going to Math is Power for You, which when you create a course, um, you would be able to see how to do that. So do I want to go into that? I don't know if we want to go into how to pull all this information. But if you go over, this is again an example. So in creating unit one, um, let me just open one of these. So we built the learning outcomes first. And then I went into um, actually creating an assignment, so building an assessment. We went into building the assessment. And then for adding an assessment, it's taken a while, you give it a name in this section, put in video, or we can go in, these are setting the parameters here. I'm just gonna put a name on it, um, one example. And I will create an assessment just a minute. And then this shows you where you can select questions from. So I went through the first topic, what do we want to do? I could search it by saying, you know, I want to do, in this case, dimensional analysis is what popped up. Or if you want to factor, and then you can search all libraries and it will return a set of questions for you to pick from. So this course was like the very first one that Josh showed where it was a blank slate and I went through and pulled everything piece by piece and built it from the ground up. Um, same way for the videos, um, I would go out to, so for example, let me go into the modify here so you can see it. Um, I went to a website which is Math is Power for You and he has a whole library of videos that can be embedded. And so I would pick the video that I would want and um, put the link in here. So if I wanted to put another video in here, if I just hit enter, and I said I wanted to name it, um, I don't know. Great video. Great video. Sarah's <laughs> giving me some names here. Great video. Okay. Then I could go here, click this. And I want to insert, edit a link, and it comes up, and I would just copy and paste the URL from YouTube or wherever else I got it, and paste it in, click OK, and then I would have that, that video connected. So in this particular course, we have the learning outcomes, the practice assignments, and the videos for each and every section. Um, the grade book is here, and there are some other things, but I think that's enough for this course, because you're going to see other pieces in other courses. OK, so let me log out. Wait, am I next for the next one? How do I get back to the slides? So the next. So what is the next one here? Mm -hmm. Oh, Sarah's next. So let me log out of this. Oh, sorry. I don't know if I did. <laughs> go ahead. Back and forth, round and round we go. Okay, so that was our Math 092 course, which is math literacy. They do things like number sense, unit conversion, basic graphing. Intermediate algebra um, is the next course. Our Math 099 course, Intermediate Algebra is fully OER. The students do not need to purchase anything for this class. We had previously been using an in-house book uh, that was very inexpensive, it was like 40 bucks for them to buy at our bookstore. Um, and then they would purchase Math Excel with it. So all together with the Math Excel and the book from the bookstore, it was about 100 bucks. Pretty high course, about 25 sections and um, it's in this book and we just decided to make it available 
for free. So we just put this book up on um, our My Open Maps. Instead of using Maxell, we converted all of our computer assisted instruction to Maps. And I'll show you what that looks like. Probably password. <laughs> okay. So this is what our intermediate looks like to students. So I up here again. You can post your syllabus calendar. When a teacher teaches this course in our department, copy this course and then they can go and edit it for their own needs. But you see here, the entire intermediate book is posted as we are within each unit. You go to a lesson and you have this section reading as a PD that we post. Learning videos. I, I make these myself or a team. Sometimes we use them. The ones that we find in my open math are also posted. And then this is like the link and content for course. So again, this was pretty much from scratch, but it is accompanied with a book we were using in house. So we lined it up to exactly meet the needs of our course, which was easy and cheap for students. So, all right. Sarah, if it's all right, I, I'm going to ask you a quick question because um, I'm curious about it. So you, you were doing uh, this in-house book through the bookstore. I assume that there was a print book the students are purchasing uh, originally. Are they? Do you still provide a print um, copy? or? Good. That's a good question. We What we say in the bookstore listing when they go to the intermediate algebra course, it says this is an OER course, so no text, no resources are required except they have to buy a calculator for this class. But it also says that paper copies are available for those who want it. So they can get that um, if they want to, but it, it's only a very small number of students who, who make that choice. But the bookstore does print some for those who want it. And we are then send PDF over to our disabilities and they take it and um, do what they do of uh, reading issues and that sort of that they, they can have a, uh, available to them. Yeah, yeah. to do I, I don't know. I know they do something with make it <laughs> available it's on campus who who those special books. That's that great. I think that's a great balance. The digital materials, obviously, they come with practice, but sometimes uh, students needing some type of print option. So, thanks. I do have a question for you, actually. Is there sure. a way to turn off printing? There, I know there's a thing that says make printing difficult or something, like a little checkbox. But is there a way to just turn it off completely? Um, it's not something that you can control 100% on the internet. So people, for example, could always take a screenshot of this. And so I think when you check out that box, it says make it difficult. It just removes a print the button option. Position that because it doesn't mean you know still a student could figure out how to print that page. It would just take a little bit more effort. We do have. <laughs> Once in a while, a student up in the math center or tutoring center printing out like an entire book. We're going to button in the future. <laughs> so, all right. So the other class I was going to talk about is business calculus. Business calculus is really expensive work. It's, uh, it's not a high enrollment course across the country. Business calculus sold. They are quite expensive. They, it was like 200 bucks. It was crazy. So uh, we were together to put together, actually the first one we did, wasn't yeah, it? Yeah. I think this was the very first one we did in Open Math. The this course together, where um, we have a lecture grade approach to the course. So we teach this both online and face-to-face. -face. And the students can purchase it's less $10, a paper version of the lecture guides, 
And when then they're in this face-to-face -face class, they would come in and the problems are there and the major theorems are listed and then they can write right in the lecture guide. But we also post it up here. So if they don't want to purchase the paper copy, they can view it and just write on their own paper. Or they could write on their own computer if they have a tablet. So it's a lecture guide approach to the course where you go in, um, and, and we also use Excel in this. So we have all the Excel documents in here. I don't want to go to that one. Let's go to applications. That's more interesting. <laughs> so first derivative test. Um, videos and reading. So now in the My Open Math course, you have the blank lecture guide posted, and then there's videos of us going through the lecture. So in our online class, they can participate in filling out the lecture guides like a student who attends lecture does. It's also great for our face-to-face -face students because if they miss a class, they can come and see it, uh, or if they need to revisit it after they attended class and want to see the topic again. So this lecture guide is is uh, working out pretty well for us. And then again, we have videos, we have uh, the My Open Math computer practice, and then we also have uh, more in-depth writing and written assignments that involve Excel and projects and such because it's calculus. So it's all posted here. They have discussion options here where they post and can view each other's assignments and comment on them and help each other improve upon them. And Marianne teaches this class also. Yeah, so. I just, just want to say, I, um, Sarah and I worked on this together. Um, and again, we got a grant from the college. It was an improvement of instructor grant that we worked on, I think it was 2016. And uh, we could share. And Sarah did a lot of these videos. And we shared other videos. Um, I make the PowerPoint. And I'm a PowerPoint queen. I enjoy <laughs> my lessons in class. I do, I do, I've done a lot of PowerPoints for this, um, and then I use the PowerPoints also embedded in uh, my course for my business calculus class. Yeah. Um, I think Rachel's next though, right? Yep. 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 Back, back and back. forth we go. Sorry, we Sorry. keep switching back and forth. <laughs> No, that, that's great. I particularly like that idea of it then like you, you have students helping each other and, and commenting and, and sharing uh, some of their projects. So that, that's great. Okay. And so is it, there we go. And then click, click. Yeah. Okay. So now why am I getting here? Uh-oh. <laughs> okay. So we did that. Yeah. Sorry. We just need to get to the end of this slide. <laughs> okay. So now Math 094, Math 098. Um, this is a large scale project, which I'll just summarize. We have beginning algebra, which was Math 091, and intermediate algebra. So if a student came into Dutchess Community College at the lowest level of our placement, they would take one semester of beginning algebra. Hopefully they would pass. They would move to intermediate algebra and then go on to their college level. So they had a full year's worth of math remediation before they could take their college level course. So over the past two semesters approximately, we have um, done a, a large project to say, let's redo this and we're creating a combined introduction to algebra, intermediate algebra course. It will be a five credit co rec blended course. That's the backdrop. So for this, course, there are lots and lots of resources out there for beginning algebra in Ohm, and there are lots of resources out there for intermediate algebra in Ohm. And we have, um, we're taking the approach where we're kind of taking the components, so the second slide that we're showing up, that we're taking the math to our Talk before about the cost. This was previously $100 for beginning algebra, and then they go to intermediate algebra, and that was a approximate $100. For developmental students, they would have easily spent $200 for their college courses. Um, so this is so it's a combined course that's going to be in OER, and students will have the option to buy from the book. I don't know how are we on time. Okay. Okay. Uh, we're, we're good. Okay. Uh, so let's go back here. 30 minutes. Again, we should have had full screen. <laughs> 
So this first um, that I'm going to show you, look, it says unavailable because it's open yet for students. There are about four or five faculty units. So I have the first unit, another instructor has the second unit, another has the third, and Sarah has the fourth and the fifth unit to be building. And we set up our structure. Now, I'm going to explain what this is. Um, the first thing here is our first section. So there are three sections in this first unit. The material you see here, I have actually copied over from an existing course. So I've done this copy function, browse courses. And I am looking at, this is basically a pre-algebra or elementary algebra type course, the material that I'm looking for. So I would select that. And then I go through and I can preview or copy a course. So I already know which ones we looked at. Um, we narrowed it down to the CK12. We looked at Lumen. Um, so let me just show you. So for example, you can preview a course or you can copy it. So if I want to preview to see what's out there, this is now a standalone course from someone else. And if I'm looking at saying, Okay, I want to look at expressions and equations, uh, and I'm going to look at introduction to algebra. This textbook section exists. Here's a set of videos, and then there's some homework. So I might look at this section and say, do I like this section? Does it have the material that I want? And if it does, then I can use it. Okay, so I would go back. That's, oh, sorry. How do I get rid of that thing again? Here we go. So. I have previewed it. I decide I want to use a piece of it. I click the copy button. I do not want to copy the whole course. I'm pulling components that I want for my particular course or our particular course. So I would select items to copy. Again, I'm not copying everything. I want to go to a particular section. And for example, maybe I want to do order of operations. I want the textbook. I want the videos. I want the homework. I would go all the way down and then I'm going to copy it. Okay, and these are, you know, check boxes that you would want to go through. I would click copy. And now if I look, it's going to be here and it copied it into the main course page. So once it's in the main course page, then I can move it around where there's a quick rearrange or I can go in and manually move things with this option. So what you see here at the bottom is this course is in design mode so we have some things that are just kind of plopped in there as a clipboard and then we rearrange them as we want and that's what you also see in here i copied these specifically and moved them to this section because now i have to play around with where they fit in the course content and each section of the course will have the same thing we're going to have a textbook uh, selection we're going to have a video selection, a practice, and then we might have some uh, sample activities, which you see this is hidden because this would be available for the instructors, but not necessarily for the students. Um, and the great thing that we are doing with this, because we're blending content and we want it to align with the way we teach the course, is we have textbook sections coming from different textbooks. So, um, for the students, we have to explain why it looks a little different, but we really are trying to meet the needs of the student for the particular course versus just saying, here's one textbook, and I'm just going to cut out a whole bunch of pages. Um, I think that's it. I don't know if there's anything at this point. So let me log out for Sarah, I think. Let me go back. As you do that, Rachel, I'll just uh, note that we may have chatted about this previously, but it would be great uh, when you guys are ready to identify that as a public course template because I think there would be a lot of interest around this, uh, you know, or yeah. given the, the interest around co-rec. Yeah, we actually, um, I got a request from Moha after uh, presenting at um, Nismatic this weekend. So I oh, once great, we have great. it available, so from current slide. Okay, so now I'm going to, it seems to be delaying just a little bit, but there it comes. Okay, okay Marianne's going to pop in there. I don't know if Rachel mentioned this, but when she said she, you know, we work on a project, we we are getting paid for these projects through our college. Um, Rachel and I were both involved in what's called the Innovative Educator Grant, right? 
So our college is supporting us in this. It's not just that we're doing it out of the goodness of our heart, although we do a, do a lot about the goodness of our heart. Um, so I wanted to talk a little bit about um, pre-calculus. Um, right now we have about 13 sections per year on campus. Um, we have a lot of concurrent sections, um, which I'm sure another, a lot of colleges have that too, where pre-calculus is taught at the um, high school level also. Currently, our students are paying $150 for the book, um, and some teachers even, it's a Wiley book, so even some teachers also used Wiley Plus, which is an additional, I'm not even sure, because I didn't use for my pre-calculus class. Um, um, but our goal is, this is our pretty much next in uh, on cue, right? to go OER along with Math 109, I believe Sarah's next also, right? Um, so uh, for uh, reassign time to grant to build this um, pre-calculus course using um, the OER. I Using Wiley. So it was our delve into um, um, the, the uh, component, component for, yeah, for our practice problems at home for at practice. I really liked it for pre-calculus, which is one of the reasons, and I think Sarah, actually, you had one too, right? Mm -hmm. A section of, so we're really starting to go in that direction um, as we're moving forward. Mm -hmm. um, Saying that, I, I also have worked with um, um, my 125 class, which is my business calculus class with Sarah. We've talked about doing this. And this semester, after Rachel and I are office mates, so we talk a lot about OM and how we can do things together. And she had talked about putting the course and embedding it in Blackboard. So I thought, you know, I'm going to try this for the first time. Might as well just try it. <laughs> so I did. Um, so we started doing this. First of all, some of the benefits that we found. First of all, the huge savings to students. Um, it was relative. It's relatively easy to create the content that matches our courses. Um, it, it does take time. It's, it's definitely it's not that it's complicated. It's just it does take time to build it, particularly if you're going to go search for material yep. and find the material that meets your needs. That's the time-consuming part. It's finding the material. Definitely. Also, even just going through the practice problems, as you're going through the practice problems, you're taking yeah. time viewing, like, is this really a question I want? Do I want to edit that question? Again, it is a big time commitment to just look and see what we want to do. But it is, I felt, it's very easy to edit. Um, we can edit from semester to semester. As, as we've gone through, we've definitely tweaked our courses, like, okay, this is working, this one isn't, or we want to tweak it. Um, but the one thing is, it's really nice to just hand over a course, to copy a course, especially to an adjunct instructor, um, where I'm sure a lot of colleges have had this, poor Sarah being our department chair, has had you know an adjunct tell her the day before classes start that I'm, I'm no longer available. Um, so we can pretty much hand over, okay, here's a course for you to start with. Here's a, and you can change it and edit it as you see fit, but here's a good template to start. Um, the next thing is a lot of our concurrent high schools right now, their budgets are crunching too because enrollment is down and you know the tax, everything with taxes. So they're having difficulty paying for new textbooks every three or two or three semesters or just some of the um, electronic components that we have to each of our courses. So they we're finding that we can now hand this to our current instructors also. And was a big benefit. So, Marianne, I don't know if to actually run it or doing some quick back to the check my. I mean, got to be saving students given all the sections that you're moving for, like at least a quarter million dollars a year in tech. <laughs> yeah, probably. Yeah, we. Actually, I don't know. Have you done the math? No. I don't know exactly, but um, I think I agree. Um, I started talking about this a little bit. We talked about this a little bit about that we're becoming just again out of a vacuum. Um, Duchess has innovative 
your program here. Yeah. Um, brought into this, it does real time. So as Ra as Rachel was saying, just time consuming is not something that you you know you are cuff. You have to put in the time, the course the way you want it. You start with a template from someone else. You always tweak it to your liking. Um, that does take time. We do get we've been getting time through this uh, innovative educator or. Um, Sarah and I, and we also got a summer um, team that's called a Improvement of Instruction Grant, which we also got money for to work our courses and get things. Um, and also we've been by our administrators to um, do webinars like we're doing right now on OER. And if Matic, it will, we all remember it was 16. That was, so we went to this Matt and Kingston and we saw my open math for the first time and we came home, we came back here on fire like we've got to do this. This just seems like the right thing to do. And I've also been to AMATIC. I was not there this year, but I went to Denver last year and we were at AMATIC and we also, there was a mom presence there and I know Lumen was there too. It was great to see what people are doing with it. Okay. Well, a little bit about uh, Blackboard integration. Rachel can <laughs> do this too. I think Rachel did this also. Um, I started it for, actually, this is my first semester where I integrated it into my Blackboard course. I can probably show my Blackboard course if I can. I don't know if I can. I don't know I get there. And open if I can get there. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry, I don't wait. There you go. Can I get that from there? It's probably going to look to Sarah because uh, I don't know if we're on her computer. We did it for the first time. Is it locking you in? Yeah, it'll be <laughs> Never mind. Never mind. I can the integration at the end here too. So. Okay. Okay. Um, so, um, what, yeah, it has it definitely has an integration. The pro were that because I've done both. I've done where a Blackboard course, and then I had my uh, my homework in my Open Math or in Ohm. And I do this like the fact they only have to be in one place. They like the fact. It's all there in one. Day. Also, I can input and pull in my grade uh, ohm into Blackboard, which is but some of the cons that we found. And Josh, I know you're going to address some of these probably, right? That stuff we might not have known about. But what both Rachel did and changed things uh, to tweak in our mom course or in our ohm course, where Blackboard was not changed. Um, and when we pull in our assignments, each needed to, to be integrated individually. I click on it into the grain book to put it into Blackboard. Um, and I, we didn't have any information at the time how to do this, but I think you're going to address some of those, correct? Yeah, very brief. I'll say that, that the things that we, through our partnership with SUNY, could provide technical support around because you're exactly right. It, it, there isn't a lot of documented information, and then it's a little bit of, again, kind of technical work. So, um, <coughs> follow up if you guys are out, you know, want to implement the integration and get some help in the or CUNY OA services. Okay. Yep. Okay. So I think we're. So now, oops. I'm going back to Josh, right? Yes. Oh. All right. You guys, I'm going to share and you share your mind real quick here to wrap Ready up. Stop. Yeah. Do you see that? Do you see that yet, Josh? Yep. Let me bring up my screen here. Okay, are you guys seeing that now? Yep. Okay. 
So I uh, uh, brought this slide that I failed to have in the uh, front of the slide deck here just to give you the web address I referenced before, the open.nys.org site. Um, again, that's a collaborative uh, initiative by both SUNY and CUNY, and it goes if your resources or need some assistance. Um, I'm going to start with uh, a couple of uh, somewhat unrelated topics, but the first one I wanted to do is just quickly uh, show folks the uh, enhancements that are being worked on uh, by Lumen uh, that will be rolled out over the summer with the OWN platform, and I think it was Rachel was showing earlier. Uh, the interface uh, to go uh, when you want to go look and search the library uh, for questions and add questions uh, to your uh, problem set uh, on the screen is an example of what that looks like today. And I would say that if, if you really enjoyed surfing the web in 1996, it will be a very comfortable, very familiar interface. I'm kind of joking around a bit, but it's, it's not the most modern interface. And so one of the things that we're working on is to introduce a much more kind of drag and drop kind of uh, clickable interface for searching questions and so you'll be able to type search terms in and have it kind of uh, recommend certain search terms based on the keywords being used there's um, when you do the search for uh, search you'll actually see the exact question you won't have to go preview the question if you're used to doing that it will also give you some indicators as to things like the question is algorithmically generated so each student would always get a different set of numbers to be working with or in this case you see the CC here it indicates there's a closed captioned video uh, that uh, is there for uh, to help students in terms of working through the problems and so forth so um, this is the first major enhancement that we're working on um, the next one will be around question authoring. So if anybody's tried to author or edit questions in uh, MyOpenMath uh, or Ohm, you'll notice that there's a kind of uh, a scripting language you have to learn about, uh, which can be a bit of a barrier sometimes for folks, or at least it's time consuming uh, to learn about. And so we're going to have a much easier kind of process for editing and, and authoring questions that will roll out sometime next year. Uh, let me now just uh, switch over here to my browser and uh, hit the last two topics. So the uh, one was uh, just around what this integration looks like. Um, and actually, let me sign in and first show the course here and own very briefly. And so I'm going to go to this, this college algebra course. And so you can see it has modules uh, for each topic, and each module has a set of content associated with it, and then uh, assessments and so forth. By then, uh, if you're interested, and it is just totally an option, but if you want this to be integrated into uh, your learning management system, could be Blackboard, could be Desire to Learn, Moodle, Canvas, and others. Uh, that's a, a relatively uh, straightforward process once we get some of the back-end technology set up, which I think is one of the issues that came up with, with you guys at Dutch Us. But you can see <clears throat> this is the same course here, same set. set uh, oh, actually, I went to the wrong course. So hold on one second. Let me find the right one here. There we go. So when I come into this course, uh, you see the same set of materials. Here's that module one, the same thing here in module one in, in Ohm. And if I open up that module, see all the uh, same information here, and we can click in, for example, uh, to go see some of the practice uh, questions. And you can see that, you know, for the student, it's very transparent, but you can see uh, the OM uh, questions appearing right here within Blackboard. And for graded questions, the answers for, or the grades for those that flow directly into the, the grade book. Um, I'm a little low in time, and I want to make sure we have some time here at the end for questions. So the last thing I just want to show is around uh, accessibility, which is, I think, increasingly a big issue in higher education uh, and really this is to ensure that students with disabilities can access the content 
uh, in an equivalent way to, to the students without disabilities. I think Sarah was mentioning um, some work that happens at Duchess to ensure students um, have access to print materials if they have a disability that requires that. Uh, OHM uh, is, is, is highly compliant with accessibility uh, standards. And uh, the one thing I wanted to show here and pull up here is under the account settings, it's easy for a student who may be using a screen reader, for example, to go in and change some of their settings so that the screen reader technology works effectively with things like a graph or an equation that need to be explained to the student. So I won't go into a lot more detail in the interest of time, uh, but it does, uh, I just want to emphasize, make sure people knew that that uh, if, if you know, accessibility is an issue, that's something that's generally covered quite well with this kind of technology. Okay, so I think those were the things I, I wanted to make sure I touched on here. Uh, I'm gonna stop sharing my screen and come back to the chat window. And so we have a, a few more minutes here left in the, in the hour. Um, and so uh, let's open it up to questions at this point. So if anybody I uh, would like to type a question in the chat room, uh, or if you'd like to, you can let me know and I can kind of turn your mic on if you'd like to ask a question verbally. And I'll also see if anybody, um, Duchess, if you guys have any you know, last comments or things that you want to, to touch on before we took questions. And I think you might still be on mute, Rachel. There we go. Sorry about that. I'm off oh. mute. Can you hear me now? Yeah. Sarah and Marianne had to leave. One had a class and one had a meeting at two. So if there are any questions, we can answer them. You can always email us. I think our emails were on the cover side. I mean, sure, it's been a great, great tool. You have to learn. You have to practice and, you know, sit down with it and do it. But. Well, one of the things I think is, is worth that investment is the kind of control, well, besides the cost saving for students, which I think everybody sees as, as beneficial, uh, the ability to then uh, kind of make the course your own and make sure it's going to meet the needs of your specific students. Uh, I personally think that that's quite worth the investment there, time and effort. I mean, the, the other thing that's helpful is we've had, um, you know, you can adjust on the fly. So like this morning I was in class and there was a question that the formatting formatting of the answer was causing students to not get the question correct. So they did the question correctly, but the way it was um, requesting a format. Mm -hmm. So in class, I was able to um, go in and I withdrew that question from the assessment so it didn't count against the students. And now I know when I go back in at the end of the semester, that's a question that I'm gonna go edit. So, uh, you know, you can do things on the fly, which you can't necessarily do with the textbook other than just crossing that question out. I see, are there any faculty teaching a math course through, uh, only through Waymaker? Not here at DCC. We just kind of learned about Waymaker this weekend at Nismatic, so it's something you know we want to learn a little bit more about. Yeah, Carly. So I'll just mention that um, we've had um, a, or there's a, a math course, uh, a stats course, concepts and stats that's available through Waymaker. For those maybe not familiar with Waymaker, it's a uh, platform that supports more personalized learning with a lot of analytics running behind the scenes, wrapped around open educational resources. The concepts and stats course was originally developed at Carnegie Mellon through the online, uh, sorry, the Open Learning Initiative, OLI, and we have a partnership with them, and so we're now supporting that in the Waymaker platform. Um, there's a fairly large number of faculty members in so SUNY and CUNY using that right now. It's originally funded through a Gates Foundation project, and they were part of that. So Erie Community College and Rachel referencing some of them presented in Nismatic uh, this past weekend is, is one of the larger ones in, in SUNY. And then Queensboro uh, Community College um, uh, in um, the CUNY system is, is a large user of that as well. So I we're, we have a minute or two. Oh, another question. Uh, sure. In fact, that was the one I think I accidentally was pulling up before, um, Carlene. But why I'm doing that, let's see if there's any other questions uh, from anybody else here. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah. Okay, so let me just share my screen real quick and I'll show very briefly the Waymaker course, um, but, but would be happy to um, you know, follow up and talk with people in more detail about it. So it looks similar in terms of the content folders here that we looked at in the uh, College Algebra Own course. You'll see a, a kind of difference here in that everything's organized into these study plans uh, that, that are part of the, the each module. Um, Well, that's not an impressive demo there. Let me reload the page, see if that helps. There we go. Um, and so also in the interest of time, I was just gonna do very briefly, but just to highlight some differences. Uh, students go through uh, these uh, different content uh, tiles, we call them, and they take a pre-assessment before they start the materials. It's a little short quiz. I won't show that right now. Uh, but once they take that, then they get color-coded uh, feedback here on the content materials, kind of indicating where they have some strengths and weaknesses, and they need to spend uh, focus more of their time. Uh, this one's coming up as all, all three need need work, so it's not a great example, but in some cases they might be a blue color indicating they have some prior knowledge. Once they go through the materials, there's a self-check at the end of each set of materials that they can use to make sure they're understanding the concept. There's then a graded quiz at the end of each module. They get two attempts on those quizzes. Uh, after the first attempt, they get some more personalized feedback um, and hopefully uh, do better on the <clears throat> I know. Uh, um, and if my hand can cave, I'll try to show the faculty dashboard is a problem. So, uh, but there's a faculty dashboard where basically you could go as an instructor and see which students are uh, struggling in the course uh, and then reach out with some messaging tools to provide some assistance. But I think in the interest of time, because I want to respect everybody's time here, I'm going to um, pause that and uh, wrap up, but I'd be happy if anybody's interested to uh, reach out and you can uh, set up a time, I'd be happy to show you in more detail or put you in the sandbox course so you can go take a closer look yourself. So let me put my email address here in the chat room. Uh, I also will follow up with everybody with a copy or a link to the recording from today. Um, and that way, too, you can you know, reply back if you have any questions or need other assistance. So <clears throat> let me just conclude by uh, really thanking Sarah, Rachel, and Marianne for taking time today to share the work that was has been going on at Dutchess Community College. Uh, I, I just really impressed as you went through it, looking at all the sections that you're moving over and the, the impact that is already having on a large number of students there in terms of both cost savings and I think giving them a more powerful learning experience. So again, I really appreciate your time. Um, and I'd encourage everybody who uh, is here to, to share the recording and, and resources with others and obviously follow up with any of us if you have more questions. Thank you. Thanks a lot. Enjoy the rest of the day, everybody.